Story 24 of Uncle Wiggily's Travels. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. Uncle Wiggily's Travels by Howard Roger Garris. Story 24 Uncle Wiggily and the Chickie. Well, what shall we do today asked the second cousin to grandfather prickly porcupine as he crawled out of his bed of dried leaves and looked over to where uncle wiggily was washing his whiskers are we going to travel some more oh yes answered the old gentleman rabbit we must still keep on for i have yet to find my fortune what are you going to do with your fortune when you find it asked the porcupine will you buy a million ice cream cones with the money oh my goodness sakes alive and a pot of mustard no replied uncle wiggily if i ate as many cones as that i would have indigestion as well as rheumatism when i find my fortune i'm going back home and i'll buy something for sammy and susie littletail and for johnny and billy bushytail and for all my other animal friends including grandfather goosey gander that's what i'll do when i find my fortune very good said the porcupine and then he got up and washed his face and paws and he wiped them on a towel after the old gentleman rabbit instead of before him for you see when a porcupine soaked up all the water off his face he left some of his stickery stockery quills sticking in the towel and if uncle wiggily had used it then he might have been scratched but as it was the rabbit didn't even get tickled and very glad of it he was too oh my yes and some pepper hash in addition well uncle wiggily and the porcupine had their breakfast and then they started off they hadn't gone very far before they met a locust sitting on a low limb of a tree and this locust was buzzing his wings like an electric fan and making more noise than you could shake your handkerchief at on a tuesday morning why do you do that asked the rabbit to keep myself cool said the locust i'm fanning myself with my buzzy wings for it's going to be a very hot day then we must keep in the shade as we travel along said the porcupine and that is what he and the old gentleman rabbit did and it is a good thing they did so for as they walked along where it was cool and dark beneath the clumps of ferns and under big tall trees they passed by a place where a bad snake lived look out there's a snake's hole cried uncle wiggily and he jumped to one side ha i'm ready for him called the porcupine and he got some of his stickery quills ready to jab into the snake but the snake was out on a big rock sunning himself in the hot sun though when he heard the rabbit and the porcupine talking he made a jump for them and tried to catch them but you see they were in the cool shadows and the snake's eyes were blinded by the sun so he could not see very well and thus the rabbit and his friend escaped i tell you it's a good thing we heard the locust sing and that we kept in the shade or else we might have stepped right on that snake and he'd have bitten and killed us said the porcupine and uncle wiggily said that this was true well they kept on and on and pretty soon they sat down in the shade of a mulberry tree and ate their lunch then they rested a bit and in the afternoon they traveled on farther and just as they were passing by a large gray rock that had nice green moss on it all of a sudden they heard something calling like this cheep cheep chip cheep cheep oh chip beep beep what's that asked uncle wiggily in a whisper i don't know maybe a burglar fox answered the porcupine also in a whisper but i'm all ready for him so he got out some of his sharpest stickery quills to jab into the burglar fox and the noise still kept up cheep cheep yip yip yap yap cheep chap that doesn't sound like a fox said the rabbit listening with his two ears no it doesn't admitted the porcupine and he stuck his quills back again like pins in a cushion perhaps it's the skillery scalery alligator and my quills would be of no use against him he went on then all at once before uncle wiggily could make his nose twinkle like a star of a frosty night more than two times there was a rustling in the bushes and out popped a poor little white chickie only she wasn't so very white now for her feathers were all wet and muddy cheep chap yip yap cried the little chickie why what in the world are you doing away off here asked uncle wiggily you poor little dear where's your mother oh me oh my cried the little chickie i only wish i knew i'm lost 
i wandered away from my mamma and my brothers and sisters and i'm lost in these woods oh chip oh chap oh yip oh yap and then she cried real hard and the tears washed some of the dirt off her white feathers don't cry said uncle wiggily kindly we'll help you find your mamma won't we mr porcupine of course we will said the stickery stockery creature you go one way uncle wiggily and i'll go the other and the chickie can stay on this big rock until one of us comes back with her mamma yes and here is a piece of cherry pie for you to eat while we're gone said the rabbit giving the lost chickie a nice piece of the pie so off the rabbit and the porcupine started to find the chickie's mamma they looked everywhere for her but the porcupine couldn't find the old lady hen so he went back to the rock to wait there with the lost chickie so she wouldn't be lonesome but uncle wiggily wouldn't stop looking pretty soon he heard something going cluck cluck in the bushes and he knew it was the mamma hen then he went up to her and said oh i know where your lost chickie is well at first that mamma hen didn't know who the rabbit was and she ruffled up her feathers and puffed them out and let down her wings and she was going to fly right at uncle wiggily but she happened to see who he was just in time and said oh thank you ever so much uncle wiggily i was so worried that i was just going down to the police station to see if a policeman had found her now i won't have to come along children little lost clarabella is found uncle wiggily found her so she clucked to all the other children and the rabbit led them toward where clarabella was sitting on the rock with the porcupine and on the way a big ugly fox leaped out of the bushes and tried to eat up all the chickens and uncle wiggily also but the old mother hen just ruffled up her feathers and puffed herself all out big again and she flew at that fox and picked him in the eyes and he was glad enough to slink away through the bushes taking his fuzzy tail with him then the rabbit hopped on and took mamma hen to her little lost chickie on the rock and the rabbit and the porcupine had supper that night with the chicken family and slept in a big basket full of straw next door to the chicken coop then they traveled on the next day and something else happened what it was i'll tell you right soon when in case a little boy named willie doesn't crawl up in my lap when i'm writing and pull my ears as the conductor does the trolley car bell rope the story will be about uncle wiggily and the wasp end of story twenty four